Welcome back. Chapter 20 narrates the adventure of Mambrino's helmet, followed by discussions between Don Quixote and Sancho regarding their respective chivalric fantasies and certain social values that Cervantes will question repeatedly over the course of the novel. First we note that it starts to rain, perhaps alluding to the thirst that our heroes were seeking to satisfy at the end of chapter 19. But it's also an important plot device because Don Quixote now sees a man on horseback who wore on his head something that glittered like gold. And he insists that this is the helmet of Mambrino. The narrator tells us that the rider is simply a barber who, returning from a nearby village in which a sick man needed a bleeding and another needed his beard trimmed, had placed on his head his brass basin in order to keep dry from the rain. It is important to note that the philosophical context of this adventure hinges on an exchange of views between Don Quixote and Sancho regarding the value of empirical evidence. Maybe this is just a silly detail because, as we know, Don Quixote is crazy and often misinterprets reality. Either way, it's curious that Don Quixote emphasizes that his interpretation of the barber accords with experience itself, the mother of all sciences. As usual, Sancho has doubts and is unwilling to disregard what his senses tell him. It's just a man on a gray ass, like mine, who wears something shiny on his head. Where am I going with this? The terms of the debate between Don Quixote and Sancho seem to allude to a scientific issue, namely the discovery of blood circulation in the late 16th century. A Spaniard, Miguel Cervetus, described pulmonary aspiration around 1550, and then an Englishman, William Harvey, described the cardiovascular system in 1615. What is wonderful and deeply ironic about the episode of Mambrino's helmet is the fact that Cervantes examines the services of barbers, who at that time, in addition to shaving beards, also provided bleedings for the sick in their capacity as primitive surgeons. By the way, Cervantes' own father was a barber surgeon. If our author casts doubt on the barber's profession, he does something similar regarding that of his hero, who is now transformed into a phantom, like those that Don Quixote claimed had tossed Sancho in a blanket in chapter 17. The barber, who, never imagining or fearing such a thing, suddenly saw that phantom bearing down on him, had no way of avoiding the thrust of that spear other than to fall off his ass. When he contemplates the supposed helmet, Sancho also undermines the logic of our hero. By God, this is a good basin, and if it's worth a maravedi, it's worth a piece of eight. Don Quixote says it's a salad helmet. Remember the two helmets he made in chapter one. And when he hears this, Sancho could not control his laughter and remains unconvinced. It looks exactly like a barber's basin. Laughter again. Not only indicating a funny scene, but underscoring the differing perspectives of different characters. Note that if the new science of anatomy challenges the medical function of barbers, the episode also highlights the subjective significance of material things. Don Quixote insists that, as for the helmet, the barber did not know how to recognize or appreciate its value, reminding us of one of the economic principles of the school of Salamanca. That is, the value of things is not intrinsic to them, but only a function of our relative desires for them. In any case, Don Quixote also clings to the idea that if Mambrino's helmet now appears to be a barber's basin, that is because a metamorphosis has occurred. Moreover, this metamorphosis soon connects to the amorous complexities of the novel. This is because, while discussing the helmet, Don Quixote makes a double mythological allusion to Vulcan and Mars. But whatever it is, because I recognize it and am unaffected by its transmutation, I will have it repaired at the first village where there is a blacksmith so that it will supersede by far and away even the one made and forged by the god of blacksmiths for the god of battles. Informed readers will grasp a reference to a mythological love triangle and will remember Vulcan's jealousy when he discovered Mars lying with Venus. Some critics insist that Cervantes is a Renaissance author rather than a Baroque one because they do not find his texts to be as complex as those of authors like Góngora or Cabello. I think they are mistaken, deceived by the comic levity of Don Quixote. The Adventure of Mambrino's Helmet is an excellent example of Baroque artwork, and the literary density of the episode only increases exponentially when the moral issue of Christian behavior 
enters the equation. 